Honorable uh, President Grimson, Dr. Pema Gamso, distinguished delegates here, I'm going to talk about comprehensive uh, Hindu Kush Himalaya assessment. And the seed of this assessment was sown in 2013 in Rajabek uh, during the Arctic Circle meeting where eight countries, secretaries, government uh, were present and we started. It took five years since then to have this comprehensive assessment, engaging 350 professionals from all over the world, 80% of them from the region, and 30% uh, of 350 were women. So that's a, uh, a very comprehensive assessment. And uh, from member countries, some of the scientists were also involved in the steering committee to guide the uh, entire uh, comprehensive assessment. And uh, I'm not going to have the entire report, but uh, linking to this uh, session, I'll focus on climate change, what is happening in Hindu Kush Himalayan region, third pole region, and then uh, what's the impact on cryosphere, and then what is the consequence for the sustainability uh, issues. So uh, you know already this region, very importantly, why third pole? Because we have ice, snow, and permafrost in terms of reserve, um, very high volume uh, apart from the two poles. But importantly, this is a global asset for food, energy, water, the carbon, and cultural and biological diversity. So uh, this region is uh, shared by eight countries in the Kushimalan region. They are mentioned here, yesterday also mentioned. Ten major rivers originate here. Then uh, about 240 million people live in the mountains. And 1.9 billion people are actually part of uh, this uh, uh, mountains and downstream. So you can imagine one-fourth of the humanity is actually catering directly uh, by these mountains. And if you look at the food which is produced from this sub-basins uh, uh, here, almost uh, uh, th three to four billion people are catered. So this is the importance. So now, now you can see mountains are important. Why we need to protect cryosphere mountains very much? The population that the red part you can see are all in the downstreams. They are at risk. Highly vulnerable. If something happens to the mountains, this large volume of people are going to be impacted. They are at risk. And that's why the mountain has to be safeguarded uh, very much. The resources have to be safeguarded. What happens here in high mountain region impacts uh, a large population, one-fourth of the humanity. So this assessment, uh, if you see, was released um, and it's a very comprehensive assessment uh, uh, printed by Springer Nature. It's open access. All of you can have access to this. Very important. It has all three uh, pillars of sustainable development in addition to that climate change, drivers of change, cryosphere, all uh, very important uh, elements have been taken into consideration. Now, looking at the slide, Paris, we agree for 1.5 degree. But that is too hot for the Hindu Kush Himalayan region already. It is 2.1 already. I mean, you can imagine this is uh, uh, what we are saying. We are also seeing the elevational amplification of, of temperature rise. That means higher altitudes are heating more. And with the current emission, we might have by the end of century in some areas 5.5 degree rise. That's a huge, huge impact. And if you want to see What's happening, uh, uh, this uh, temperature rise with the glaciers, you can see Hindu Kush. Here it is uh, rising at this moment, uh, I mean with the uh, 1.5 degree would be 2.3 degree centigrade and the Eastern Himalaya is 1.9 degree centigrade. So this is uh, the least in terms of if you look at this region. So very much glaciers, temperature rise and the runoff, glacier melt uh, is uh, very much linked and people downstream are linked uh, in this. So by the end of the century, if we see, if we have 1.5 degree, around 36% of the glaciers will be lost. But with the current type of em emission, which is 8.5 RCP, then almost two thirds of the glacier will be lost. So that is what uh, is very much dangerous uh, in terms of uh, what is happening for the people, for their adaptation and the resources and the risk downstream. So I've already talked about these two points, but very importantly, what uh, we are going to snow covered 
uh, areas and you snow volumes are going to be reduced very much so. Uh, then the third pole is going to vanish. <laughs> that is the danger. As we say, Arctic is really in danger. Similarly, the third pole is in danger. Uh, so uh, we need to really think on this. So if we look at different uh, glaciers in the central Himalaya or eastern Himalaya or uh, Karakoram or Pamir, Hindu Kush, you can see the trend very much in almost all the areas, the trend, the projection with the climate change is that we are going to lose a considerable uh, mass in due course of time. So what is the consequence then? The people who are already next to the mountains, you can see the glaciers have gone. This is uh, Ladakh in India. And you can see how dry lands have formed. Only small patches of uh, green greenery is remaining. Peoples are migrating out of high mountain areas. So it's a huge impact already seeing, but very less talked and uh, presented in global forum. So if we look at the whole region, then climate change impact on water resources is going to be a very critical and very, very um, important. So the con uh, very important thing is loss of storage of uh, ice. This is what uh, we are uh, going to see. Then, uh, of course, uh, very much um, you know, we have to see that people living in next to the glaciers nearby are impacted more. The uh, uh, rainfall precipitation is uh, very much uncertain. Uh, the pattern is uncertain, uh, which uh, the consequences are already seen in this uh, region. Then a uh, huge impact on springs, which are the source of water for people living in the mountains. They are drying up. They are already being lots of impact that is seen. And then, of course, when we look at the uh, water uh, discharges uh, very much from the uh, glaciers in this uh, it's going to increase, but from mid-century it is going to dry up. But in Ganga and Brahmaputra, uh, there will be uh, more contribution of precipitation, so it's not going to impact so much in terms of water discharge. And then uh, now, and uh, the next issue, if the glaciers are melting and the volume is reducing, then at high altitude glacial lakes are being formed. And these glacier lakes are uh, quite dangerous in terms of disasters, but also in terms of uh, uh, very much uh, the quality of um, life up into the mountains, in terms of tourism, in terms of projection, I think this is uh, a big impact that we are seeing. So what is the volume of that impact? You can see, see uh, from uh, 1990 to 2010, about 21% uh, increase in number. Almost 1,000 uh, glacial lakes have formed in that period. Huh? And then uh, in area also about 21%. Small lakes are actually more sensitive to climate change. So that is what is the observation of the assessment. And about only in Nepal, 21 lakes are at the verge of potential uh, GLOF, glacial lake outburst. So this is what we are seeing. So if we look at uh, in the region, apart from the glaciers, uh, cl uh, climate change impact is also putting a lot of pressure on the disasters. And yesterday also a number of people talked about the disasters. Water-induced disasters are uh, very much, uh, the intensities uh, are increasing, the frequencies are increasing. And if you look at the last part of that slide, see, uh, for three decades, starting from 1980 to 1990, 1992, uh, 2000 and 2010, you can see that blue line, uh, the, the lowest bar is the uh, increase in the uh, uh, frequency, huh, number of disaster. But the blue line, you can see how many people are dying. Huge increase, almost five to six times more number of people are dying from 2080 uh, onwards, comparing to, 2000, uh, to 2010. And the yellow part is the uh, assets which are affected. Uh, and then very much economic loss, the red one, you see, it used to be much less economic loss. But because of disasters, water-induced disasters, economic loss has tremendously in increased, both uh, human life loss and economic loss. So this is a very important area in future for cooperation uh, in the region. So what does this disaster, what does this climate change, what does this uh, crash fear, um, ice, uh, um, glaciers melt mean to people? People are already poor. You can see in this slide, 
Uh, Bhutan, because it's completely mountainous, you don't see things. But in other mountains, except for Afghanistan, you see multidimensional poverty. People are more poor in mountains than other regions. That means people are going to be impacted. They will be further pushed towards poverty, further poverty. This is what uh, is the danger. And then, of course, food security, energy poverty, uh, then uh, out-migration, biodiversity loss. So what we had in 15th century, 70 to 80 percent have been already lost. And people actually, 60 to 85 percent of their subsistence come from biodiversity. So energy, uh, we talked yesterday. And uh, towards my last uh, one or two slides, you can see for futures. So you can see three scenarios. One is prosperity in HKH, prosperous HKH. The other one is business as usual, muddling. And the third one is no cooperation at all. So these are the scenarios that was developed in comprehensive assessment. And they said we have to have a very good uh, path for prosperity where uh, cooperation and investment comes. And I'm very happy to say, and I'd like to compliment uh, Dr. Pema's leadership, that we are already in this prosperity hill. So the formation of the task force and uh, actually uh, implementing SK's call to action is uh, very important. So the assessment has been put into a document for call for action. And this SK's call to action has been signed by the eight countries' ministers and task force has been fun. So already the agenda for work has been defined and there are six areas for cooperation. So very much uh, regional cooperation, then of course working for climate change, then also uniqueness and recognizing of mountain people, very much ecosystem services, and then also addressing SDGs and sharing information and knowledge is uh, the agenda for the SK's call to action, which now uh, is taken by the new leadership in uh, Simod. Thank you very much. Let's protect the pulse of the planet. What happens in Hindu Kush Himalayan region will be felt by all over the world. You know the population number. And yesterday we have heard, even in Japan, they are facing the consequences. Thank you very much. Thank you.